there have been several raptures already. We'll call them raptures, yeah. catching away, mm -hmm. departures, yes. beamings up, <laughs> translations, whatever you want to call it. But God has been in the business of catching people away. And he's going to catch us away one of these days. Here, I'm going to go over these ten raptures and then we're going to get it the first time. We might come back to this. There was Enoch. Genesis 5, 24 says, Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. Did you know that? Maybe I'm not going to first Thessalonians just yet. Maybe I'm going to Genesis. <laughs> Who has this passage? Genesis. Genesis 5, 24. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Am I quoting it right? And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. That's right. The first catching away that we have recorded in Scripture is Enoch. <coughs> if you want to be caught away we've got to be like Enoch Amen. did I quote it right Daniel? Yes, close enough read it to me and Enoch walked with God and it is not for God to you better be walking with God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Listen to me. Yes. It's going to be a terrible place to be living. Amen. If you're walking with the devil, you're not going up. Amen. You're going down. Are you listening to me? Amen. Loud and clear. you got to be walking with God if you're going to go up. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the only, that's all it says about him. Amen. Yes. Yeah. 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 One verse in the Bible about a man. And, I, and you know what we can preach all morning about? <clears throat> Enoch walked with God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Who did you walk with? You ever walk with somebody else? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Maybe God. Mm-hmm. You ever take loose of God's hand? Grab a hold of the enemy? Amen. 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 Walk with the enemy over to that computer. Mm -hmm. Put something on there that you shouldn't have on there. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Walk with the enemy over. To the bar. And you ain't going over there to witness and pass out tracts now at that bar. Amen. Now me and Jerry Hollis in that corner, that boy over there in the corner that's smiling at you, me and Gary Hollis went to the bar. And we, we took Bible tracts in here. And we handed them out to the people in the bar. And we went back into the bathroom. We pulled the rope, toilet paper roll. <laughs> so we put the track in the toilet paper roll. Okay. And then we rolled the toilet paper back in. <laughs> Amen. You can wipe and be saved at the same time. Amen. That's just the way it works. Amen. But while we was there, we didn't drink. Because Christians don't need to go to the bar and drink. You really don't. Go there and witness. Go there and love on somebody. Amen. Amen. Go there and work. <laughs> Rich's wife works at bar. But you know what? There was an atheist boy that came in there. And she witnessed to him. He was an atheist boy and she must leave that boy to work. And one day he just dropped in. He just dropped in. But you know what? He was ready to go. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Is it all right to work in an environment like that? Christian, should a Christian work in an environment like that? Well, let me tell you what. If you're strong enough to work there, and God put you there, did you know that Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king and brought the king wine all the time? If you're called to do it, you can do it. Yeah, that's right. There's been a couple people in here that <clears throat> was working at some places that I told them they shouldn't be working at. When God tells me to tell you, I will. <clears throat> and I told them, I said, if you do not quit this place, if you don't quit working this job in one year, you'll be in a divorce court. I said, the Lord done told me to tell you, and I'm telling you. And a year later, they filed for divorce. They're not here now. The good news is, he quit the job, repented, and they got back together, and they're working their marriage out, and they're doing, they're doing well together. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. But you've got to be careful what you're doing. Amen. Well, what about working on Sundays? Well, who are you putting first? That's the only, my only question is, if God gave you a job, and you need to... And you need to be in that job, then you get yourself in church somewhere, some other time of the week. Find a church that has a Tuesday night service or Thursday night service or a Bible study or something that you can go to. Amen. I'd rather you not work at all on Sunday. Just so you can be in the house of God for the main worship. Amen. But you know what? We're not under law, and it's not going to send you to hell to do that. But if you want the highest blessing, put God first. In everything you do. And if you walk with God, you'll be like Enoch. One of these days, you'll just be walking along with God. And whew, oh, God. I, I expect I'll probably drop dead behind the pulpit. Amen. I hope. And, of course, I might be so old then, I might have to be like Brother Chuck Flynn. <laughs> I might be sitting up here in a chair preaching to you. Maybe even a lazy boy. I get old enough. If I'm old enough, I want permission to have a lazy boy right there and I can preach to you from the lazy boy. And I might just drop dead from the lazy boy. And I don't want you all to cry and have to be sad. And, oh, Pastor, oh my goodness, Pastor, can't I? No, just, just keep praising the Lord until the service is over. Have an altar call. While the while the uh, Amix or whoever comes to get me, Amen. Sing I'll fly away. Yeah, sing I'll fly away. Rich, just get up there and sing I'll fly away. But if that's all, if we're not raptured, we might be raptured. We might be taken out. It's coming shortly. It's coming shortly. Amen. Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Are you walking with God? If you walk with God, He's going to take your hand one day. Pull you right out of this body. Amen. You're going to go be with him. And there ain't nothing sad about it. Amen. The only thing sad about it is everybody else whining around that's, that, you know, sad because we're gone. Yeah. And that will make me sad. I told the Lord earlier last year, I said, God, i got to get this fat off of me because I have to live longer but for Eliana. Nancy's fine. But Eliana needs me. Because <laughs> I have to keep these two here in line about how to raise them. And so I have to, you know, i got to be here because I don't want Eliana to be sad if her papa's gone. So, uh, but, you know, I'm kind of kidding, but I'm kind of not because you know what? God has something for you to do. And he's got some people, a certain set of people for you to minister to. And if you don't take care of your body, hello, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you smoke it and drink it and ruin your liver and do all kind of, you know, and, and eat it into oblivion, then you're gone 10, 15 years early. And your kids and grandkids and everybody that needs you, all for what? All for what? All for another piece of pie? 
Another smoke. Another drink. Another bottle. Save your money. Another soda. Have fun. Go do something fun. <laughs> hey, man, I'm off on that. Yeah. Yeah. Moses was the second person to be taken up. Now, Moses died before he was raptured. He died, and they didn't even know where his body was. And you can read about that in Deuteronomy 34. But then there's an unusual scripture in the Bible, in, the, in Jude, chapter 1. Of course, there's only one chapter. In Jude, and in verse uh, 9, and uh, it said, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, so I want you to picture this. If, if I'm right about this, which I think I am, you have to correct me later, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. They didn't know what Moses' body was. But anyway, the archangel, Michael, and the devil were fighting over Moses' body. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. I do not have any idea why in the world the devil wanted Moses' body. I wish I was smart enough to know that. Why in the world the devil wanted Moses' body? I don't know. But probably because God wanted his body, and the angel wanted his body, so that it can be up behind my screen here as the second rapture. <laughs> I don't know why. But it says... And that angel durst not bring against him any railing accusation that said, The Lord rebuked thee. That's all it tells us is about, about Moses' body. But the, the angel Michael took Moses' body after he was dead and buried and caught him up and took his body to heaven after he died. Amen. Isn't that strange? The second rapture that has occurred in Scripture. And unusual. I think it's very unusual. I mean, I, now, I have to tell you this. There may have been a whole bunch more raptures that we don't know about. We don't know if there's some other people besides Enoch that walked with God and weren't, and he took them. <coughs> The Bible don't record everything that ever happened. The Bible says if the things that Jesus himself did were recorded, all the books wouldn't be able to contain it anyway. Because, you know, Jesus was here from the beginning. He was here with the Father in Genesis 1, verse 26. And he and God the Father talked about making mankind. He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So, Jesus was here all along. So, did you know that Jesus was participated in the creation of the earth? John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. Verse 1. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So, Jesus was God. Without Him was not anything made that was made, and all things were made by him, verse 2. Amen. Jesus is a part of all creations. Amen. Jesus was a part of it all. Hallelujah. And Jesus has got some things to create in your life, if you'll let it. Hallelujah. He has some things to create in your life, if you'll let it. So, Moses was the Second rapture. I, I decided when I taught on this subject, because I'm not an expert on end times, that I will teach you the things I know. And uh, obviously, and the things I don't know, I'm just going to skim right over it. And smile real big so you think I know. Because if I don't know, I'm not going to tell you. I don't know. If I don't know, I don't know. And hundreds and thousands of scholars have argued these topics for many, many years. 
and all the details we don't know. But there's a few things are 100,000% sure. And that's the direct things that Jesus said. Amen. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming to receive you unto myself. And in fact, while we're on the topic, let's just go to <laughs> Acts chapter 1. No, let me be patient. Help me, help, me, Jesus. help me be patient. We'll get to Acts chapter 1 in a minute. But it's sure that Jesus is coming back. Amen. It is for sure. And if the people, you know, there's, there's hordes of people that don't believe Jesus is really coming back. Oh, that's all symbol, blah, 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 blah. Jesus did not say he was symbolic of coming back. He said, I am coming back. Yes, he did. As lightning, going from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Yes. It's going to happen. And lightning is pretty quick when it happens, too. Yeah, so then there was uh, Elijah, our third rapture. 2 Kings 2.11. And uh, let's see if I can. Somebody find it for me. Two, no, I got it. I'm there. 2 Kings 2.11. Let's see what it says. Now, let me, let me paint you a picture here. Well, there's already a picture behind you. See this dude down here? With the bald head, or mostly bald? That is Elisha. See the dude up in the chariot? chariot? That's Elijah. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. Elisha served Elijah. Yes. He was his assistant pastor. He was his helper. The Bible says he washed Elijah's hands. He served him. He carried his coat, his cloak, his mantle. He, he just walked around and helped him. Did you know ministers need help? Amen. And if you don't believe it, I'll give you my job for about one month. And you'll find out real fast that you need help. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, he wanted the double portion anointing that Elijah had. Now, Elijah did many miracles. I can't remember the exact number. But Elijah did many miracles. You know, the axe head floated, and, and you know, the fire came down from heaven, and sucked up all the water, and then, you know, when uh, with the prophets of Baal. And remember the whole story? All kinds of stories. With the, the dead boy was raised from the dead, or, you know, was healed from the, uh, the widow of uh, Zarephath. Well, Elijah told Elijah, uh, Elijah refused to leave Elijah. Elijah said, I'm going to die. Elijah said, I'm going to die. And uh, he said, you just go on now because I'm going to die. And he's going about your business and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to die. <laughs> and Elijah said, as the Lord liveth, and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. Amen. Now that's the kind of church members I want. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And some of you have been here for 20 years. Thank you so much. As the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. Amen. Now I'll tell you a little secret about ministers. Some of you may not know this. Ministers are people. They burp. I'm not going to go into all the other details. They eat. They get angry. They get their feelings hurt. They get sensitive. Oh, yeah. All that. No, not me, but others. <laughs> others do. I'm going to bet you money that Elijah 
kick Elisha off on many occasions. I remember when Jerry used to work for us. And I would just irritate the whole fire. And Bethany, too, when she worked with us, because I'm a neat freak and I want everything a certain way, and da, 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 da. And I'd go back in that storage room, and Vicki knows this because I made Vicki man several times. And Gary knows it too, because, you know, but I want everything. And if it, and then if it's too much clutter, I just go and start throwing everything away. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> but they knew my heart, and I'm, a, I'm good at apologizing. I apologize a lot. I could say, I'm sorry, just come right. Oh, you know, Fonzie had a little trouble with that. Remember Fonzie? Fonzie. <laughs> I was rude. I was rude. Didn't say wrong. I just, it just, just comes right off my lips. I'm wrong. See how easy that was? Yeah. Now, some of you husbands need to learn how to know him. Just say I'm wrong. Some of you wives need to learn how to know him. Just say I'm wrong. Hello? Amen. Come on. So anyhow, Elijah. Oh my gosh. Can we stay till two? Elijah said, I tell you what, because Elijah wasn't believe, he said, as the Lord lives, as my soul lives, I ain't gonna leave you. And so Elijah said, I'll tell you what the deal is. You come with me. And if you see my mantle, then God will give you a double portion. Amen. Now, I don't know if Elijah knew that he was going to be carried away from the chariot. Did you know if he did? I don't know if he did. But he was. Let's, let's read it before. 2.11. And it came to pass, as they still went on, do you see the word they? Because guess who hadn't left him? Yes. As they still went on and talked, if you're going to be working with me, there's going to be talking. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing some of it. At least 50%. At least. Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Oh, hallelujah. I wish I could have seen it. And horses of fire. And parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Amen. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father. Why did he cry, My father? Think he knows. He cried, my father, my father, because this man was a spiritual father to him. Amen. He was there for him when it was good times, and he was there for him when it was bad times. And he told him straight. There were some times Elijah told Elijah straight. That ain't the way we do it. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Those of you that cleaned this church, no. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I will tell you, uh, that ain't the way we do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the horsemen thereof, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more, and took hold of his own clothes and rent them into two pieces. And took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. The, the mantle of Elijah, his cloak, fell on Elisha. And he had no, he was granted a double portion of anointing. You know why you should serve a minister somewhere? Because you want double what they have. If they, if they're just so, you know, but you really you like their spirit. And ask God for that double portion of anointing that they have. Whatever it is. In whatever area it is. Elijah did so many miracles. Elisha, when he died, did 
Twice as many miracles minus one <coughs> of what Elijah had done. And they put Elisha's bones in a tomb. In a cave is what it says. A cave. And there was a war going on later. And they took the body of a dead soldier and they threw it in on Elisha's bones. And the man came to life and was wow. resurrected and healed. Thus, in his death, he finished mm -hmm. exactly double the miracles that Elijah had done. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. So, <laughs> if something don't happen when you're alive that you didn't claim it, it may happen when you're dead. Amen. Amen. The finishing of it may happen later. Well, I didn't claim that my children to serve the Lord and they were not serving the Lord. Rich had to, Rich's mom had to go to heaven before Rich ever got right with God. And Joanne's prayers kept going and got a hold of Rich after she's already done gone. Glory be to God. And some of your parents and grandparents' prayers are working on you today. Hallelujah. I want to see it happen while I'm still here. <laughs> and some of them will. But if I'm short one or two, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to say, thank you, Jesus. It's going to happen when I get to glory. Amen. You know why? Because we claim it in faith. And we don't look at the way things work in the natural. And so, that's the third rapture of ten. <laughs> and I didn't get to the thief in the night. 